Trust is the glue that holds a relationship together. And once that's broken, it really will take two willing partners to fix it. On today's case, Ms. Peoples Hampton admits that she's not perfect, but she says neither is her husband. She says that he is so busy pointing the finger at her that he can't see how his narcissistic ways have fanned the flames that is burning out their marriage. Can this couple rekindle their spark? Or is this marriage about to flame out? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Peoples Hampton versus Peoples Hampton. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Peoples Hampton, you are here today because you really want to save your eight-year marriage. You claim your husband's insecurities have made him not trust you. You have two beautiful daughters and you feel you owe it to them to try to save your family. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Peoples Hampton, you say that you're here today because you're really done riding the roller coaster of a marriage that doesn't work and you want out. You claim your wife is a liar, a cheater, and a manipulator. Those are strong charges. You say you want a divorce because you feel there's nothing left to save. Yes, Your Honor. That is very strong language from people who have been married eight years together for 12 years, but separated now. Can this marriage be saved? I don't know. Miss Peoples Hampton, you tell me, what are the big issues? I'll start off by saying, Your Honor, I have two beautiful daughters, and I want to try to salvage my marriage for those two little girls, you mm -hmm. know? They didn't ask to be here. Um, we got married young. We have grown. We, we work hard, you know? So I want to see if, it could, if I can save it for my daughters, for our family. And you admit that you have made some mistakes in your relationship? I have. I'm not perfect. Okay. And so, Mr. Peoples Hampton, you heard what your wife says. She admits she's not perfect, but she says she's fighting for her family. What say you, sir? I just want a divorce. I mean, we've been separating now for two years, and it's a lot better to have two functional parents and two separate households than two that bicker and can't even realize that the focus is supposed to be the children. I just want my kids and my last name. So, in other words, you say now there's nothing left to save. The only thing left to do is figure out how you can co-parent. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so I can tell you right now, this is pretty strong. Why don't you get me to how we got here? I know you met a long time ago. Where? In college, right? We met in college, and um, he was a, a handsome young man. You know, he we still were... is a handsome young man. Yeah. And you're a beautiful young lady. I'm yeah. clear that that's not the issue. We were both, like, high-class athletes. You know, I was a track star at Minnesota State, and he did rugby. And we just... You know, we connected with our um, mutual friends, you mm -hmm. know? Now, I mean, by the way, you know I heard the way you put that, because I pick up on everything. <laughs> I was a track star. Yeah. He did rugby. Yep. Okay? You gotta, you gotta separate <laughs> the two, because, you know, I, I was really popular, and he came towards me. And that's just what it is. Yeah. Um, this is where I can say that's not how that happened. Oh, wait, we, we already started at the, the meeting. It didn't come to be like that. Yeah. What do you say, Mr. Peoples Hampton? She needed help. And then I was on my way to class, so I stopped and I helped her. But she wanted to talk stuff, so I said, well, then you figure it out. And I went on about my business. Your Honor, you know how many random people try to help me? Okay, I did pull my hamstring, yeah, and I was, I was good opening the door myself. And he came, oh, I didn't even look him in his face. I didn't know who he was. So he brought that up when we actually started talking. Oh, I was a guy that held the door for you, you know? What? I was like, oh, my that mistake was so that I nice. remember the first time I saw you? That's my mistake, though, right? That I remember the first time I saw you. My fault, okay. That's what made it cute in the beginning. Mm -hmm. when he it brought sounded up very thing. cute to me. Yeah. I, I, oh, I, it's you, cute. You know, just, that's what you're supposed to do. I showed interest. I, I think that's it. adorable, okay? So, clearly, he was a good man at that time. Mm hmm I'm assuming that's what attracted you? Yes. But now, how did that turn into insecurity, jealousy, and financial issues? It was the financial issues. Like, what you financial know, issues? It'll be he's working six months on, six months off, and we have two little girls. So, now I have to be a mom, a dad, and I have to be a full-time, like, student, because I was in school, too, and I was working. So, I'm like, you know, how am I supposed to do all this, you know? And it became a problem for me. Sir, why would you work six months on and six months off? Your Honor, sometimes I just have to sit in awe and look at the things that come out of her mouth, because they don't make sense. Six months on and six months off, but I held a consistent job that got us the house that we were in, and then I worked all up until 2017. She just fast-forwarded to the point where I did not have a job. Out of 10 years that we've been together, I've always provided every single one of your needs. We needed to move, we moved. We needed a house, I got that house. 
It was my funds that took care of everything, my funds that put her sc through school, my funds that paid for her classes to do anything, my funds, my support, and my attention. Because I pay be... attention to her. Yeah, yes. I mean, let's be clear. When we first started dating, everything was 50-50, okay? It was his idea to up and move. We up and move and come down to Georgia, and now it's like, oh, well, I'm about to go back up here and make some money and send it to you. That's how we got the house. But when he got down to Georgia, we're going to be honest here. He did not work. I was the only one with the job. We had one daughter at the time. How long ago did you move to Georgia? We moved in 2015, December. Okay, from 2015... So now he's talking about 2017 when he got a job. Like, you can see so the difference there. So, in 2015, there. he didn't work? In 2015, he didn't work. So, 2016, he went back up to Minnesota and he was working for about two or three months. Hey, for Mary, he was up partners. there for six months, back and forth, which is fine. I, I found us a house. He made sure the money was there for the house. When he got in the house, everything changed. When was this? The end of 2016. We, I moved back on my daughter's birthday, September 28th of 2016. But when did you get a job? And I got a job that December because I was working a year when I had let, got let go from my other job. And since then is when I started working on my own and bringing in three times as much when given the time and opportunity to do so. Still never saw an email or a message with them people saying that to him. So, hey, to but, me, he just got a job. Okay, but if your husband is saying he contributed to the family, are you saying he didn't? He didn't contribute. So you're gonna say I didn't he contribute? He didn't contribute. I paid all the bills. You're gonna say that? I paid all the bills, all the cars. That's what you're gonna I say. I did all the cars. You're he gonna crashed say all the cars. When we first got on the Georgia, he crashed my car. I, I, that was my first car. I put my money on. And I was working hard for that car. He crashed it, talking about he was going to get a, a haircut at 7 o'clock in the morning. Nothing's open. So, how you gonna, how you gonna haircut at 7 in the morning? He had dropped me off at 5 o'clock and then crashed my car. After that, my family. It's always been my family and me with the financial stability has been me from day one. Supporting so, him and his family. He took my newborn daughter to meet one of his chicks. I went to go see a very close friend of mine of the family that and everything else. That was sending new photos and no. bikini photos. No, we no uh, kind of relationship okay. Like that. Did this woman send you bikini pictures as your wife claims? Yes or no? That's an easy question. Yes or no? So I am now hearing yes. that financial issues was a major part of this. Yes. And Mr. Peoples Hampton, how do you respond to that? Because the accusation is very serious. That so you changed financially which, which more and important, she couldn't... Making sure all your needs are provided or all your wants are given? Stability is important. From a married partner's point of view, if you all agree that X amount of money is needed to maintain the family and we walk into the relationship saying everybody's working and everybody's contributing equally. There's never been an equal contribution. Mm -mm. All up until the point to where I was not able to do so anymore. So what was, happened in 2016, 17, 18, and forward? Were you working? I was working up until 2017 when I had let go, got let go. From 2017 until the start of 2018, she was providing, but I was doing like side gigs and minor hustles and things to take care of some other things to try to take the pressure off. But I also uh, took the role of house dad. Took you care of the house. I pick up the kids, drop them off. But you know you don't get care. credit for stuff you're supposed to do. That's called being a parent. Now, and, I'm just going to put you in your place when it comes to that. picking up where your husband slacks, right? No, actually, being a wife is being a partner to your husband. Picking up where your husband slacks, and, just like and, I do for her. Absolutely. And the partners usually are supposed to be working together towards something, and that's called the family. And that's what I was doing. Okay. Because isn't vice versa when it's a woman doing it, it's a full-time job. But when a man does it, now I'm being lazy. But you came home, full meal, breakfast, water drawn, massages, waiting for you to get off work, constantly, like, That's after reaffirming. working two jobs, though. Okay, so here's my point in this. You're speaking a love language that is not her language. Anymore. Because she decided to change. Ah, now we're getting to... I never changed. If I did change, what made me change? The trust issues made me change. Because he wasn't financially coming through for me, you know, and I'm feeling like I have to take care of him, my two daughters, the bills, everything. I end up picking up a night job. That's a problem for me, especially when I have two little girls I need to raise, okay? So now I get a bartending job. Now with this bartending job, I'm stacking my money up, I get a safe, I put my money in my safe. We get into an argument, this man steals my money and goes shopping. Then when I call him, where my money, where my money? He's like, oh, I'm, I went shopping for the kids, I went shopping for us. But you didn't ask me. You don't know where that money came from. You don't know where it was going to go. Why are you taking from me? And some people might say, oh, hey, y'all married, it's y'all money. No, it was money for... It was a rainy day fund I'm slaving. So I'm working for my money to make sure me and my girls and all of us is good in this house. And then not only that was... He was showing up at the bar just outside in a parking lot watching me work. 
Okay, if occasionally, we, occasionally he would bring flowers, Your trying Honor, to be cute to see who in the if bar. If we're working in the same he... area on the way home, and if this is my wife, why would I not go home? Say she got off at 2, and I got off at 1.30, and we live on the east side of Atlanta. We're right there in the West End area, and I get done with a contracting gig. Why would I not scoop you on the way? Before, Too many times. it wasn't a problem. But here, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. Was there anything going on in the bar that he couldn't see? She did not want me to see her getting extra attention and flirting with guys. I'm a bartender. My Bartenders flirt. That's, that's what we okay do. That's married. how we make our money. So right. what are you saying? Right. I can't flirt or talk if you, to you people. You got to break a couple of rules for your family, right? Moral, moral ethics don't no. mean anything. Okay, but Mr. People's Hampton, one thing, she... it's one thing for a bartender to do their job and to be social and sociable. But it's, it's one, another no, thing for them extra. to cross the line. Okay. He left us for nine months, so I figured it was separated. Left me and the kids, we didn't hear from him. Was that your understanding? I was separated. That okay. was it. My heart was broken, shattered, torn into pieces. The only thing that I can do. But wait, was you try... haven't told me anything that would make your heart well, be Yana, broken. Well, look, did you even tell you the real reason why we're here? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. And so, Ms. People's Hampton, you still have not told me what the trust issues are. Oh, unless you're suggesting that he stopped when trusting you. When I got the you. bartending job, that's when all the conflict came, because I'm a cute girl, he see men in my face, so it's like, you know... But I want you to hear what I'm about to say. Okay. You are a cute girl, that is your side job, the bartender, but that is your husband. Mm -hmm. And if he does not want you up in other brothers' faces, he has every right to feel that way. Now, that's just the bottom line, and you can ignore it if you want to. Because if your husband is saying you can be social without being up in a man's face, mm -hmm. he has every right to say that yeah. because you are his wife and you are the mother of his children. And actually, that's what a man is supposed to say. Yeah. Say, babe, I know you're doing the most to try to hold us down, but something about this makes me feel some kind of way. And I would address it like that at first, but then when the issues become cons consistent and it just keeps on building up, like, how many more times do I need to sit up there then and, and be nice about it? Then he started going through my phone. So now he's starting to sneak through my phone while I'm asleep using my fingerprint. Okay, ooh, Lord, so how you do that? You mean take while your I'm hand asleep, and put it on? use my fingerprint on my phone, open it up, and text everybody in my phone. You wanna know what's funny? When it would be something that I shouldn't see, the kids would be like, oh, daddy wouldn't like this, and the kids would bring it to me. And then when it, if it did come down, the kids would bring me the phone. They would be like, daddy, look. Mommy got a text message. Or, Daddy, look, what's that? What you mean they showing him a text because message? Because they see the name no of the person that calls you when I'm not around. Neither one of you trust the other one. And a relationship... And I'm not, gonna, go I'm not gonna be able to fix that trust issue. That is the foundation. That's the soil that a relationship grows from. That, and that, that's just trust. Everybody thinks it's love. But you really can't love somebody unless you trust them. Yeah. You don't trust him based on what you say are his insecurities, and you don't trust her based on what you say is her behavior. I can see how it got to a point where there needed to be a separation. Well, you know, Your Honor, in the beginning, I was all for my husband. When it started going downhill, that's when I started acting out. When I started seeing girls in his phone, it's supposed to be his cousin, and him talking about But wait about a minute, his... you said that was when he was dating, when y'all were that's dating. That's what I'm saying. So then he got... But wait a minute, you got married. We got married, and he was still sneaking behind my back. He took my newborn daughter, we got married, I had a baby, he took my newborn daughter to meet one of his chicks. That's that false. he was sneaking around with. That's false. I went to go see a very close friend of mine, of the family that and everything else. That was sending new photos and no. bikini photos. No, we had oh. no kind of relationship okay. like that. Okay, Mr. Peoples Hampton, <laughs> did you take your child over to meet an ex? No. She wasn't his ex. They was flirting. He was no, hugging we on her. She was sending bikini. No, we were He told me she was his cousin. Then I asked his family you know members, and they so said close? that was his friend. Oh, that's friend. my cousin. That's how they close we no, were. They said, no, she's just a close family... I mean, she's just you a close You know how you're so close? Friend. Like, that's my auntie. That ain't really your auntie. You know how you're so close? But if it was a bro, they'd be my cousin. She said in bikinis, though. Did this woman send you bikini pictures, as your wife claims? Yes or no? That's an easy question. Yes or no? Yes. And a hush fell over Jerusalem. Yes, is the answer, correct? Yes. So, there's a reason that she felt insecure about this particular person. And you knew that. Sounds like you might have been being a little mm -hmm. petty to take the baby over there. Yeah. 
Yes. Because you knew it would tick her off. No. Drove no. an hour away from our house no. to do that. Ten Sneaking. minutes away. We're not even. So now, Your ten, Honor, we're separated. Ten away. Okay, so let's jump to the separation because I can see why you're separated. But... Yes. So now we're separated, and he's dating somebody. You know. Was this a separation to try to figure out if the marriage can work, or was this a separation? I'm sick of you. We going our separate ways. Sick of you going our separate ways. Well, well, he left us for nine months, so I figured it was separated. Left me and the kids. We didn't hear from him. And, sir, is, was that your understanding? We're separated? Yes, Your Honor. We need to do our own thing. I was separated. That okay. was it. My heart was broken, shattered, torn into pieces. The only thing that I can do... But wait, you haven't try... told me anything that would make your heart well, be Yana, broken, look, shattered. Well, Your Honor, look, the only thing that I could do was put myself back together. Understand. After... Did you even tell you the real reason why we're here? I caught her in the bed with somebody else. Oh, oh. one day caught. What? <laughs> Just like that. I usually get off at 6 a.m. in the morning. This morning, I got off at 3. This is August. I've had this job since May, so I'm being a financial su support here. There's no reason, as she would suggest before, would financial obligations be the cause for her to be in this predicament in the first place. Help me. Help me. <sighs> when did you catch her? August 17th. 3 a.m. in the morning, 2020, the night of separation, D-Day. <laughs> that was the night of separation. Night of separation was two years prior, D-Day. Wait a minute, hold up. You had not moved out of the house yet? Mm -hmm. He was in the guest room. We were sleeping apart for, like, almost a year. No, we weren't. Yes, we were. No, it was we eight weren't. months in the guest room. No, we weren't. I know, it because be you... We, we... Guest... It would be on Are and Are you really trying to explain to me why yeah. you had another man... In the house, we wasn't sexually with your active at that point. Yes, I was, we were. I was we not sexually active. Yo, was... yo, no, hold didn't. up, hold up. I was just in that bed the hold morning. Hold up. You disrespected your family and brought another man to your house where you have two children with this man who is your husband? Oh no, Miss Thing, I'm sorry. We were I... living in different rooms. No, we I weren't. don't care if you were living in different rooms. I don't care if you was living on different floors. I was You've been gone. trying to convince me that you care about your family and you have two little girls? Mm hmm I mean, Your Honor, at that point, we were eight months before this happened. I was mentally gone. We weren't, we weren't sleeping together. Well, we guess in the same what? Bed. You needed to do. find a man that could afford to take you to a hotel so that you would not disrespect yourself and your family. Well, I feel like if I'm paying the bills and I'm doing everything in my household, excuse that's me, my, Your Honor. That's excuse my me. area. It just, it's Honestly, I don't need to look at my little sweet documents. I got this little paper that I prepared for y'all because, you know, when you bring a case, I want to see what everybody wants. I put this document together thinking, let me tell these people how to reestablish trust. Then I put another document together that said, five ways to make sure your partner feels safe with you. Because I wanted to come in here to help you. But sis, I can't help you. you said I'm packing you my stuff up. Bruh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you got out there and acted like that. Man, all I want is my last name back. But you're not getting it back unless you're gonna pay for this divorce. Man, look, you need to figure out what don't belong to you and my name is that. So, you gonna pay for it? Robert, every time I think I've heard it all here at Divorce Court, I hear some more. <laughs> That was one of the most disrespectful things I've ever heard. With your family all under the same roof. You have two little girls. I'm assuming you want them to grow up to be strong women, but not to think that it is okay to disrespect their father Oof. in their own home by bringing another person into the house and sleeping with them in your marital bed. It was horrible. Yeah, there's a word for a person that would do that. Mm -hmm. And I can't use it. Me either. <laughs>